Hi, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be teaching us about the two keys of fruitfulness that a believer should have. It is important to build the foundation of your life on the Word of God so that it will dwell forever and bring fruitfulness. Let your heart be open and stay connected as you watch and listen to this video production. God bless you. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? To live by and build your life on the word. If you build your life just on culture, you are sitting on a time bomb. You build your life just on the good wishes of someone else. Men can change. You build your life based on some kind of social cultural sentiments eventually you will be disappointed the bible talks about two men who built the issue was not the building the issue was what the building was upon one built upon sand one built upon the rock the same thing happened to both of them the bible says the wind came the storms came the rain came that means it comes to all men the wind the rain the storms but the one that was built on a rock it stood it remained stable it had longevity of impact you will last in jesus name Amen. welcome to start now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the bible says in psalm 119 verses 130 the entrance of thy word is it life as you listen and watch may you experience the transformative power of god's life we'll be doing psalm 1 Please, let's go to Psalm 1. I'm teaching on bearing fruits. Bearing fruits. Bearing fruits. Blessed is the man, the Bible says, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let's read verse 3 together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water which bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We'll stop at verse 3. Hallelujah. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that we have been a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp, it says, and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a candlestick and it gives light to all those who are in the house. Leaves us with a final instruction in verse 16. Let your light so shine before men, not before spirits, not before angels, before men he says that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father are you seeing that in all of the manifestations of the sons the father is glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus was praying and the bible records that he lifted up his eyes to heaven and here was his prayer he said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee every time there is a supernatural manifestation in the bible in any form and in any fashion it always translates to the glorification of the christ john chapter 2 and verse 11 that was a story of the first miracle recorded according to john's synoptic account the miracle of turning water to wine in the wedding that is in Cana of Galilee. The Bible ends by saying this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. The meaning of all this is that from today your life will begin to bring glory to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. That your life will be a series of unending manifestations of the glory of God you will bear fruit in a way and a manner that will attract all and sundry to acknowledge the fact that God is at work in your life Amen. hallelujah every tree that does not have fruit also does not command the attention of men 
have you seen trees when it is not their season you can pass the tree and not even remember that there is a tree there but that same tree will be the center of attraction of children adults traders all kinds of people for instance an orange tree for instance a mango tree if it's not the season for its production people can at best maybe play around the tree and just use it for shade but not when it begins to bring forth mango fruits sometimes by night you hear them dropping on their own accord and you see people rushing by morning trying to pick it the tree does not have a publicity strategy the tree does not speak it only bears fruit and it brings everybody from their house to its location hallelujah that reminds me of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I will always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise and then verse 3 it says gentiles hallelujah gentiles you will not call them you will not look for them provided you are bearing fruit gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ say after me in the name of jesus shout it like a believer say in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that from today my life will bear fruit say it again that from today my life will bear fruit amen now for the purpose of our discussion this morning i want us to be brief so we can have the time to just pray and then I speak over our lives like I said I would. Um, I want to share with you three secrets that cause a believer to be fruitful. There are three biblical secrets that if and when you follow and follow to the latter, there is a scriptural guarantee backed up by the integrity of God himself that your life would bear fruit. Are you ready? Number one. The first scriptural key that controls fruitful Christian living is that you must have a systemic, consistent prayer life. Please write it down. A systemic, consistent prayer life. Many people pray, but their prayer lives do not translate to a fruitful Christian life or living because number one, it is not systemic. Number two, it is not consistent. We largely pray in Africa as a matter of emotions and sentiments just to appease ourselves as though registering, you know, that spiritual register. And that is why there is a lot of dissipating of energy without results. Your prayer life must be consistent it must be systemic hallelujah in acts chapter 3 and verse 1 acts chapter 3 and verse 1 we're exploring the first key that controls a fruitful life now peter and john went up together into the temple the bible says at the hour of prayer please say the hour of prayer one more time say the hour of prayer these gentlemen were so disciplined as mentored by the Lord Jesus Christ that regardless their schedules, regardless their family lives and their activities, they decided to dedicate portions of their days and their lives to, and to commit themselves to prayer. They even gave it timing that there is an hour in their life called the hour of prayer. Most believers do not have times that have been systematically dedicated towards spending time with the Lord in prayer. The hour 
of prayer mark chapter 1 please let's read from verse 34 to 37 this is jesus using his own life to teach us let me read and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils the bible says and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him next verse and in the morning watch this now this is Jesus himself rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed and Simon and all they that were with him followed after him men will always follow after men of prayer men will always follow after men of prayer let's finish the scripture and when they had found him my god may this be someone's testimony they said unto him finish that scripture with me all men seek for thee how many men, all men. does it include businessmen does it include wealthy men does it include tribesmen does it include kings does it include nobles when you are a man given to prayer all men will seek for you all men all kinds of men at various cadres of life and society show me a man that is given to systemic consistent prayer i show you a man that the world cannot deny eventually there a space must be created for you in life and destiny hallelujah are we learning this morning a systemic prayer life in luke chapter 18 and verse 1 jesus himself now is giving us another interesting parable and the bible says he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray always to pray always to pray men god as god did not pray but when he became a man he prayed and since he returned back to heaven as a man he's still at the right hand making intercession because men pray are we together you want your life to bear fruit no matter the point of your um, your current state spiritually immerse yourself submit yourself with discipline and grace to the ministry of prayer and you will marvel and wonder at what your life evolves into in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 there were about four constant practices that made the early church powerful the Bible says they continued steadfastly number one in the Apostles doctrine number two in fellowship number three in the breaking of bread number four in prayers hallelujah the key to benefiting from the ministry of prayer is to create a strategy for your consistency please write it is within your power to work with the spirit of god and intelligently create a strategy to ensure consistency that strategy can evolve for instance a young man or a young woman who is a student say on campus you have the liberty of time you are most likely been taken care of by your parents and so there are certain worries that are not your concern at that level of life you can design a prayer life that suits that level of life now when you become a worker an employee or an employer or a family man or a leader at any level the dynamics of your living would have changed you would need to reinvent a strategy that still allows you to be consistent for instance praying in the night for instance praying early in the morning for instance watching your life and apportioning certain days in a week certain days in a month certain quarters for dedicated moments of retreat and prayer but by all means it is your responsibility to work with the holy spirit and create a strategy per time per season there should be no excuse prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you have declared that on your own unassisted by god you are able to make it and the bible says by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail let me repeat it one more time for your hearing and learning prayerlessness is pride 
about the highest proof of humility the bible records is to be prayerful because when you are a man given to prayer you submit to the government of heaven declaring that you are helpless and incapacitated outside of the assistance of god hallelujah are we learning you want to bear fruit in your life in every aspect of your life you must be given to a systemic consistent prayer life and that means that everyone seated here under the sound of my voice an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny it has nothing to do with whether you will be a preacher most people have allowed the zeal and dedication for prayer for preachers and they say i'm not a preacher my own is a businessman or i'm a mother with kids no prayer is for all men hallelujah an attack on your prayer life is a real spiritual attack that calls for immediate action even now whilst you are listening to me are you ready for number two what is the second key that would help any believer to bear fruit i wrote here and i want you to write it as exact as i've written so that when you are studying after now you will understand what i said the second key is to live by and build your life on the word of God. To live by and to build your life on the word of God. To live by and build your life on the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Second key. Matthew 4 and verse 4. Jesus answered and said, it is written man shall not live by bread alone is that in your bible but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god that means there are two ways we live on earth bread and his word bread and his word if you eat bread alone you are not living properly bread and the word of god is the biblically recommended way to live man shall not live by bread alone there is a space for bread in your life but there is a major space for the word of god there are many people who focus on bread as far as physical nourishment is concerned and we do not invest in living by and building our lives upon the word hallelujah in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Paul was speaking and just what he said and now brethren he said I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified I like that scripture that the word of God according to that scripture does two things number one it builds you up capacity 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 the word builds you up then number two it delivers unto you your inheritance did the bible not say according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness it says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby are given to us great exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so when you immerse yourself in the word of god you become a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder hallelujah in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 there was trouble from the welfare department in the early church and they wanted the apostles to come and leave the matters of the ministry of the word and prayer and to focus on serving tables and they said no appoint among yourselves men full of the holy spirit and wisdom verse 4 says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word hallelujah is someone learning to live by and build your life on the word if you build your life just on culture you are sitting on a time bomb you build your life just on the good wishes of someone else men can change you build your life based on some kind of 
social cultural sentiments eventually you will be disappointed the bible talks about two men who built the issue was not the building the issue was what the building was upon one built upon sand one built upon the rock the same thing happened to both of them the bible says the wind came the storms came the rain came that means it comes to all men the wind the rain the storms but the one that was built on a rock it stood it remained stable it had longevity of impact you will last in jesus name are you saying amen again you will last in jesus name that no one will look at your life and say you were once glorious you were once great that statement ichabod may it be far from your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation let me teach you if you care still on that point too there are three ways to maximize the ministry of the word let me just quickly add that for our knowledge number one the three ways that we enjoy scripture and we maximize the ministry of the word number one the study of scripture so the first way we enjoy the ministry of the word is to be diligent to study scripture the bible says to study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so we study scripture the second approach to the ministry of the word is we listen to scripture this is very powerful the hearing of faith comes when you allow your ears to make contact you see your eye gate and your ear gate are two significant gates into your spirit and into your destiny when you study the word of God, you use your eye gate. When you listen to the word of God, you use your ear gate. You would notice in Jesus' teachings, he emphasized on the eyes and the ears. He that hath an ear, the Bible says, that means not everybody has that kind of ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Are we together? So the study of scripture is the first way we engage the ministry of the word. Number two is listening to scripture. Very powerful. Thanks to technology, nobody today has an excuse for being lazy as far as engaging with scripture is concerned. There are Bibles on MP3. There are all kinds of digital formats you can access the Word of God. There are people who have gone through the labor of extracting the speakings of Jesus alone. There are books of the Bible. It may take you one hour, two hours plus, maybe three hours to finish certain books. But by hearing, in 10 minutes you can finish a book and repeat it again. So in 30 minutes you have given yourself to the hearing that produces faith the truth is that most believers are lazy and indisciplined that is the truth because we have not we have largely now i'm speaking to the body of christ we have largely not been taught the responsibility component of our growth just because the holy spirit lives in you just because the bible is here does not mean that arbitrarily without a contribution on your own part you will grow growth requires you engaging with the provisions that have been made available for you are we together i can cook for you but i cannot eat for you you will need to sit down and discipline yourself to eat is someone learning so you must make up your mind that you will give yourself to the study of scripture number two you must make up your mind to give yourself to the listening of scripture number three the third way we engage the word of god i hope i've not lost you i'm still discussing the word of god is your confession of faith please write it down your confession of faith is the third way we engage the ministry of the word my bible i don't know if your bible says so but my own bible says let the redeemed of the lord 
not just think so not just wish so not just assume so it says say so meaning let the blessed of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let the wise of the lord say so it's not enough to just internalize it from the abundance of that which has been locked up in your spirit the mouth speaks you must sustain the courage to speak i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will i see and is that in your bible yes and behold the reward of the wicked the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of ah the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept i wake that means if i sleep i expect to wake up no devil will make my sleep my last time i will sleep and i will wake up for the lord sustained me listen if you do not know how to speak the challenge is that most people speak empty words they are not full of the word within their spirit so it just becomes like a chant like you are chanting as as directed by a herbalist speaking is supposed to be from the abundance of what is locked up within your spirit my glory the lifter up of my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You get up in the morning. You don't stumble into a day you did not speak to. That is a risk. No. In the name of Jesus, as I go out, I am blessed. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus, I call for the helpers of my destiny. They position themselves strategically helping me to fulfill the purposes of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Listen. The same energy it takes to complain is the same energy it takes to create. The same energy it takes to argue. The same energy it takes to tell lies is the same energy it takes to speak the truth. The only reason why Jesus finally died was because he refused to speak. For as long as his mouth was open, nobody could kill him. To give himself to die he had to shut his mouth they asked him will you not speak and he kept quiet because if at all he opened his mouth to speak the grave will not receive him do you believe what you are hearing you must believe this oh you came from a poor family let a poor family not come out of you you came from a weak family let a weak family not come out of you you came from an idol worshiping family let an idol worshiping family not come out of you you make up your mind with understanding but it is by the power of speaking can i tell you i can spend all night teaching you about the potency of the word of God when it finds expression upon the lips of faith we create possibilities by the word and believe me this is not just a Pentecostal gibberish through faith Hebrews 11 and verse 3 we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God is that true John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Bible says, verse 2, the same was with God in the beginning. I like verse 3. It says, without him was not anything made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Let me show you one more scripture. Colossians 1 and verse 16, speaking about the supremacy of of the word of god colossians 1 16 it says for by him were all things created how many things Amen. all things means even your tomorrow 
is not just created by the passage of time it is created you can send the word like an usher to prepare your tomorrow and wait for you so that you enter your tomorrow with gallancy and honor you cannot do anything about yesterday but you can send the word of god as a faithful usher it will go and clear everything that is antichrist and wait for you in one minute where you are seated can you open your mouth the one scripture you know and you can remember declare it over your life in the name of jesus christ i am the head and not the tail is someone declaring above and not beneath in the name of jesus declare psalm 112 over your life blessed is the man that shared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever when men say there is a casting down i decree and declare in the name of jesus that there is a lifting up oh the lord restores the years the canker worm has eaten the palmer worm i decree and declare the hand of god is upon my life gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising the works of my hands are blessed blessed by the spirit of god no limitations in my life by the power of the holy ghost the favor of god is at work in my life the fullness of my days i fulfill in the name of jesus christ no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper the lord stands by me as a mighty terrible one hallelujah 